Hi, it's Von Herzog. I'd like to welcome you back to The Social Club, my analog digital hybrid studio. Now today, I want to talk to you about two different types of speaker enclosures, ported versus passive radiators. You might have seen a little bit of info on each. You might know what I'm talking about. You might have no clue what I'm talking about, but I'm going to explain it to you and try and make it as easy to understand as I can. There's advantages to each, there's disadvantages to each, and we're going to cover them. So stick around, I'll try and make this brief, and let's see what we can learn about ported versus passive radiators. Let's go. Today I wanna to talk to you about two types of speakers you've probably seen, ported enclosures and passive radiators. Both enhance low end frequencies without requiring any more power from the amplifier. And both ports and passive radiators can be tuned to certain frequencies to help match up with the woofer and extend the low end to a more usable range. While both types increase bass without requiring any more power from the amplifier, they do it in different ways. A ported speaker uses a port tuned to a specific frequency like a Hemholtz resonator meaning the air inside the cabinet will activate the port at a certain frequency and will then push that air out to help extend the low end frequency without any additional amplifier power. And you can adjust the port's tuning frequency by changing the opening size and the length of the port. That's how you tune it. A passive radiator is a little bit different. With a passive radiator, it is essentially a speaker without a motor and you add weights to the back of the spider and that means that the speaker is tuned by weight to activate at a certain frequency. The more weight you add, the lower the tuning goes. With ports, round ports are the most common. That's typically what you see, but they can really be any size. Um, you typically see flared edges or rounded corners because you do want to prevent chuffing. That's one of the downsides with a ported design is chuffing. And that is when the air pushes out of the speaker, you can hear it whooshing or rushing out. Some people refer to it as farting, but I just think of it as an unfortunate byproduct of a ported design. Now, you can get around that entirely by going with a passive radiator. A passive radiator, you tune with weight, but it keeps the cabinet essentially sealed. It relieves the pressure inside the cabinet by resonating at certain frequencies, much like a ported enclosure would. However, you're keeping the air enclosed inside the cabinet. And by doing so, you end up with a tighter response. So you'll get a smoother, more accurate, detailed response from a passive radiator than you will from a port. That being said, the port will play a little louder than the passive radiator can. So it might be a decision point for you. When I had my Amphion 118s, they featured a passive radiator around the back. And I have to tell you, they performed much better than any of my ported enclosures ever did. It's easier on the room. It's e you, you, know, you don't run into potentially hearing chuffing coming out of it. That being said, there are still drawbacks to a passive radiator. They're often more expensive. They take up more real estate in the cabinet. But to me, the trade-off of the more accurate and better detailed base is a higher selling point to me than just having the port. So I want to get into it by discussing these two speakers back here that I built. I built both of these pairs of speakers by hand. The black pair is the ported design. The white pair has the passive radiator in. Everything else is identical. Same types of cabinets, same types of crossovers, including the same crossover parts. Use good air core inductors. Use German poly caps and German metal oxide resistors. High quality stuff in there. But the only difference in those two cabinets is that one is ported and the other is a passive radiator. And I tried to get the passive radiator tuned to about the same point as the port, which is about 40 hertz. One thing I definitely want to talk about is these white speakers back here. I'm giving them away. August 1st, right here, live on YouTube, I'm giving the white pair of speakers away. So watch this video, see what these speakers can do, see their frequency response, and then go watch this video. Audiophiles versus studio engineers. I break down how we can all get along. And if you go watch that video, all you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment on that video. And that's your entry.
August 1st, I'm have a live video. We're going to do the drawing live. You can see who wins and that person will be going home with new Incline Fidelity VC 7S speakers. Hand built by me here at the Social Club. So go watch that video and don't miss your chance to try and win speakers for free. I'm not asking for any money from you. Like, subscribe, and comment on that video. That's it. That's your entry. I hope to see you back on August 1st for your chance to win. To tune the port for the desired frequency, you have to adjust its length and opening size. And by adjusting that combination, that's how you tune the port for the speaker. But sometimes that can require larger cabinets to accommodate the interior port. A passive radiator is easier to fit into a smaller cabinet. But again, for this side-by-side -side demonstration, they are the same exact size cabinet. Also, one thing you have to consider with a ported design is it can be more sensitive to room interference and boundary issues. So the placement of a ported speaker becomes much more sensitive than a sealed or a passive radiator design. If you saw my speakers versus studio monitors build video, I broke down how passive radiators work. If you didn't, link above. So one of the advantages of a passive radiator can be that you can get enhanced bass response out of a smaller cabinet, similar to a sealed cabinet. The bass response will extend lower in that same size cabinet. And you can achieve similar bass response to the Porta design in an even smaller cabinet. For this example, I kept the speaker cabinets the same size, just so that would be an, a non-factor in the comparison. Now the downsides of a passive radiator pretty much just comes down to they're more expensive. And if you're not using the right kind of passive radiator, if you're not using enough passive radiators to make up for the woofer's movement, you can overextend them sometimes. And then you'll notice a degradation in quality if your passive radiator isn't up to snuff with what the woofer's pushing. There's a general rule of thumb that there should be two passive radiators for every one woofer if you're dealing with the same size. I don't find that to be necessary. Sometimes it can be an X-Max type of thing where if you have double the X-Max on your passive radiator than you do on your woofer, you have the extra extension needed that you don't have to go to a second passive radiator. You can use that one passive radiator and it has the extra built into the X-Max. So let's take a few measurements and see how these speakers measure and if we can notice a sizable difference between the ported or the passive radiator when it comes to the response. All right, good response. All right, pretty similar. You can see the only real difference here comes in the low end. And as you can see, the port has a little bit of a smoother roll than the passive, but I think the passive radiator performs a bit better. But you can see otherwise how similar those speakers are. They're identical and they should perform as such in the room. If we overlay them, Nice and flat, but I like having this little bump here in the mid-range because it's really where vocals and a lot of important parts of a mix sit. And so this gives you just a little gentle bump to help you identify those problems easier when you're working. And then very flat the rest of the way on out. They're very similar. So it might come down to what fits better in your room. So let's just recap real quick with what the pros and cons are of each. For ported speakers, you have that they're more efficient than sealed cabinets, that they extend lower than sealed cabinets with the same amount of amplifier power. But on the downside, you also have the chuffing and the larger cabinet size that can be required to accommodate the port. You also have to remember that ported speakers are more sensitive to boundaries, so you might have a little more difficulty placing a ported speaker in your room than you would with a sealed or a passive radiator speaker. And then we have the advantages for passive radiators, right? You can get deeper bass from the same size cabinet or even smaller than you would from the ported design, but they can be more complex and expensive to deal with if you're building speakers out. But if you're just looking to buy speakers, a passive radiator is worth checking out. 
and the best choice depends on your individual priorities. What do you value more, deeper bass or smaller size or smoother sound? So when you're out there deciding which set of speakers you want to buy, think about your own priorities, how you're going to be using them, and then make the best choice for you. It doesn't have to match your friends or someone else that you're watching on YouTube. It only has to fit your situation. And if it keeps you happy, don't worry about what everybody else is talking about. And I think that should do it. If you didn't already like and subscribe, please do. And until next time, this has been Von Herzog from The Social Club.